Why not dairy? Yes, dairy does have calcium. You can't argue that dairy has calcium. It does have calcium, and it is a source of calcium. But there's a lot of things it has in it, too. It's like a chemical cocktail that you don't want to put into your body, like the IGF-1, the growth hormones that are found naturally occurring in dairy products. So IGF-1 is a hormone that has been shown to promote the growth of cancer, and it's found in the dairy and the meat products, especially in the dairy products, but also when you put in your body, your body upregulates its own production of IGF-1. So you have higher doses of IGF-1 in your blood. And there's a population with um, something called Laron syndrome that's been studied that this population, they have low growth, they're, they're um, smaller people, but they don't have cancer. And it's because they can't, it's like I think they can't absorb IGF-1 or they don't make IGF-1, one or the other. So IGF-1 is an issue in terms of growth in cancer. Once you're full grown, you don't want to grow anymore. It contains other steroids and hormones. And if it says no added hormones on the label, that's because they're still naturally occurring. When you make breast milk, you have hormones. Animals make hormones. We are hormonal beings. Has a high saturated fat, the dietary cholesterol, the sodium. It inhibits iron absorption. I have a lot of people that come to me and say, I'm plant-based and I'm iron deficient. Well, vegans and non-vegans have the same incidence of iron deficiency anemia. And dairy seems to be a kicker. It seems to put people into the iron deficient uh, possibility even more. There's also a link, there is some research showing that early consumption of dairy promotes type 1 diabetes. And that's because of the molecule, the protein getting absorbed into the bloodstream. It's a big molecule, and if it gets absorbed into the bloodstream too early, it mimics, uh, it's, it mimics uh, the molecule that looks like the, the thing responsible for type 1 diabetes. And this is just gross for me, the white blood cell factor, that there's literally pus in the milk, and the mastitis. I have two kids, so I breastfed for a year twice with each of them, or one year each, and I had mastitis once each, and it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And these animals have mastitis all the time because they're forced to continue producing milk, which is completely unnatural. And because of that, there's pus that gets into their milk. And there's literally regulations. They don't say no pus, they don't get rid of the pus. They just regulate how much pus can be in the milk. So for me, I see milk or dairy and I just see pus. The other factor is casein. The primary protein in dairy is addictive. It has an opioid-like effect in the brain that mimics something like heroin, uh, because if you ever notice, the more you eat, the more you want. And I did a, a self-placebo controlled study on myself without knowing this many, many years ago. When I was transitioning from vegetarian to vegan, I, f I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a, a vegan cheese. And so I bought, this was before they were really saying the word vegan. So I bought a cheese, it was soy cheese. I'm like, yes, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And I remember every day I would put like a little, one more slice in there because it was so good, just one more slice. I'm like, wow, this is so good, I'm eating way too much of it. And I finally decided to look at the label. That's before I was a dietitian, of course, because now all I do is look at labels. And there was casein in it. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's true. It's really, it is addictive. Any of you that know people that love their cheese uh, will tell you the same thing. But there's studies on it, and Dr. Neil Barnard talks about that. He has a new book coming out uh, about this, too, about dairy. And there's antibiotics, again, and other veterinary medication residues that have been found in dairy products. Finally, what's up with this idea? If you think about this, if you just think about this, anyone, if you go around the world, there are populations that 60% of the population, upwards, I've heard recently, upwards of 100% of different cultures. Different cultures have adapted differently to cow milk or milk, actually all dairy. And we become increasingly lactose intolerant because after we wean, we're not supposed to keep drinking milk. And we're the only species that continues to drink milk after weaning, and we're the only species that continues to drink milk from a different species. So that, if you just think about it from that perspective, if we are not making lactase to digest lactose, isn't our body telling us something? But wait a minute, you say, because what I'm taught and what I get emails about all the time from my Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and all of their related uh, relationships are, well, no, you could take lactase, do everything you can. They teach you, how do you get that milk in their bodies? You have to get that milk in their bodies. Try this enzyme. Try this milk that doesn't have, it doesn't have lactase. I mean, there's like, Everything you can do, if, it's just psychosomatic. They just think that they can't absorb dairy. I can't tell you the strategies that have been employed that people are trying to get you to get that dairy. But if your body's saying something and really rejecting it, why would you do it? I can't tell you, it is the first thing I, I recommend people give up. And I've seen people with asthma, lifelong asthma, eczema, allergies, myself included. I used to walk, I was famous for having tissues in my pockets, under my pillow, everywhere. So much so that 
I live in LA, so I was at Whole Foods one day, and I got caught by the media wanting to talk about the, the new freeways, and they interviewed me, and I was like, oh, okay, fine. So I got on the interview, I left, and I went to the bathroom afterwards, and I saw that my tissue was right here. And nobody in the front of the camera told me that I was on the live news with a tissue on my sleeve. So that's my embarrassing story. But um, point was, I had chronic sinus issues my entire life, and nothing helped. I, w I remember falling asleep in high school because I was taking Benadryl because so I could breathe. Uh, and this, when I gave up dairy, went away. And I see this with all my clients all the time, uh, just so many inflammatory conditions that are really not responsive to other things. They're not even diagnosable, or they are, and people don't know what to do with them. It really helps. Digestion. For people that are maybe not even lactose intolerant, it's just it's very hard to digest. So there's, I don't know, a million and one reasons to avoid dairy. Well, again, limited data on long-term outcomes on vegan diets without the dairy or with calcium intakes. Some studies like what Dr. Davis was talking about last night, like Epic Oxford, where people were eating a lot of processed foods, they weren't getting enough of the calcium. But um, you know, usually it seems like we can do okay. We may not do better. We just have to make sure we're getting those, in, those, those foods that are high in calcium and we're making sure our vitamin D levels are good. And, so we really just don't, we really just don't know. The evidence is really back and forth. So what do we do about that? Make sure you are doing regular weight bearing exercise. Every day do something, move, weights, walk, everything. Use your muscles, use your body, use it or lose it, I used to say as a personal trainer. Make sure your vitamin D levels are adequate. And so I recommend people just kind of get a blood test and find that out. I know we talked about that last night as well. And, and, and make sure that you're including those foods in your in your um, diet.